Hey guys, uh, confession to make, I used to be a BMW fanboy. We had uh, two generations of 5 Series. We drove it, owned it for 12 years. That was uh, E39 and then the E60. I skipped on F10. Um, why actually? Because I switched to uh, Toyota Prius and Volkswagen Passat. Uh, and this is the G30, uh, which I want to try out. Um, it's not uh, something completely traditional. It's a plug-in hybrid. Uh, so, and what happened to me? I'm not, no longer a BMW fanboy because I got infected with the electric disease. Uh, ever since I tried electric vehicles, uh, I think it's the future. I like the way they drive, I like the way they accelerate. And um, to be honest, um, it completely cured me of my BMW disease and everything uh, related to the uh, internal combustion engines. Uh, actually, I dread the thought now that Inside this thing, there's a very uh, complex mechanical thing with lots of moving parts and the pistons and the, uh, and the spark plugs. Oh, and there's uh, oil. Uh, horrible. Uh, yet, you have to uh, give it to the designers. It's still a very beautiful car. It drives nicely. Uh, we'll take a look uh, at how it drives. It's very comfortable inside. It's packed with different features. Um, and I just love the way it looks. So yeah, it's, it's the past. It's going. It's, it's, uh, it's not a modern thing, but um, I love it. And uh, let's take a look uh, closer um, at the car. Look at it. It's classic. I mean, some years ago, the ultimate car that I wanted to own was an M5. You didn't want anything else. And this looks proper, proper BMW. Not the one with the uh, ugly nostrils from the uh, current uh, uh, M3 and M4. Very traditional looking, but uh, with the uh, pretty aggressive bumper. Uh, nice headlights. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very classic, classic 5 Series. Uh, I used to really drool about one. Not anymore, but look at it. Long bonnet, black wheels, blue color beige interior just the way i like it i mean some year some years ago if i would uh, try to spec the car on the bmw website that would be pretty much something like this except now i would probably choose for the tourer this is very very impractical and we're going to take a look at why is it so impractical i mean you have to give it to them them the traditional german manufacturers uh, people didn't believe that Tesla would take off so quickly because they thought they would never master being so meticulous uh, about the quality of the interior. Uh, but I have to say this is not something that was here all the time. So E39 felt really uh, like a proper, proper built car. Having said that, and we switched then to E60, I am not sure it was a very, very good quality. What struck me then is um, uh, I sat in Audis and, BMW, uh, uh, and, and Volkswagens and I thought, actually, this is, this is a better quality build. Uh, lots of you know, panels and the gaps and everything. It, it just felt, it felt not, not so nice in E60. But they have um, upped their game and now it's a, it's a pre proper, proper uh, luxurious uh, sedan, I have to say. Uh, yeah, the choice of the colors um, of this particular car is pretty much the same as I would have chosen. Maybe I would have gone for the Piano Lux Schwarz or something like that. And after 12 years in, uh, behind the BMW steering wheel, I'm completely at home here. I know exactly what's where. All the buttons, all the dials, everything where they used to be for all these years. And uh, I drive. I'm a big fan of iDrive, actually. We'll take a look at that uh, a bit more. Uh, one thing that this car is missing is the uh, sunroof uh, and panorama roof. I'm, I'm now so used to them that it feels a bit uh, claustrophobic, I have to say, especially with this dark uh, uh, interior at the top. But okay, I mean, you probably get used to that. Uh, although it's not the car that I would buy these days. <laughs> I would have bought it like five, ten years ago, but not, not anymore. Still, very enjoyable. Let's take a look further. The seats, 
not just some seats. These are ventilated uh, leather seats uh, that uh, actually blow cool air when it's hot. It's, 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 it's really nice. So many electrical adjustments. You can actually even have this one electrically adjusted, which is, you know, not very common. Uh, lumbar support. Um, the, uh, the side support uh, is, is, is really hugging you when you're in the sports mode. Um, yeah, super nice. And then also check out this feature. Up, the door closes by itself automatically. Well, BMWs are not known for particular special passenger comfort and things haven't changed. Uh, what, for example, uh, was a, a bit striking uh, in the E60 is that the, uh, the front seats were quite thin and because they were quite thin there was a bit more leg room. Uh, I cannot sit here cross-legged like I can in, in, in VW Passat. It's manageable, of course, it's uh, respectable, but uh, not something spectacular and definitely not uh, comfortable enough for three passengers. Yeah, like if I have to spend here more than one hour, it would be um, appalling. It's, it's very uncomfortable. The tunnel is big. Of course, we have here the, um, the full drive system. It's a rear drive car, uh, which, is, uh, which is nice, but for the uh, middle passenger in the rear seat, it's, it's not very comfortable at all. Um, not enough headroom because I'm actually set higher than here. Um, lots of features uh, in here. We have um, USB-C ports. Um, uh, presumably these actually can charge the phones. I'm not sure, maybe not. Uh, we have seat heating and these are pretty uh, nice uh, pockets here. Uh, overall, quite comfortable um, with uh, four of us. And what do we have here? We have here, of course, um, the cup holders. Um, and not much else. There's no storage or anything else. Oh boy, look at these humongous exhausts. Uh, they are not fake, by the way. They are for the uh, petrol engine, the four-cylinder petrol engine that we have. Uh, yeah, but I think they're light, lightly oversized. But okay, looks nice. And now I'm going to explain to you why uh, this car is a uh, incorrectly built plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. I also own Volkswagen Passat GTE and there they got everything right. So the battery is underneath the seat, which makes it a bit more uh, closer to the center of the car with a better uh, balance. And the BMW is obsessed with balance. Why, oh why, did they put the battery all the way to the back? It's heavy. It's not a, a humongous battery. It's a only 9.2 kilowatt hour battery, which is actually full kilowatt hour less than uh, uh, Volkswagen Passat, but okay, it's here. And because of this, look at the size of the boot. It's tiny. It's actually the same volume as um, Volkswagen Golf or something. It's 410 liters. And like any uh, plug-in uh, hybrid electric vehicle, what we have here, we have here, of course, no space for the uh, spare uh, wheel. So we have the space for the cables. And instead of the spare wheel, you get the compressor. Maybe you'll get uh, to the destination like that. Actually, we can even take a look at the battery now because this car is equipped with these handles and we'll be able to fold the rear seat like that. And what do we see here? You see here, the, this, this whole thing is, is actually the battery. So imagine how much more space would have been in the boot had they uh, taken another decision. And you can actually shape the, the fuel tank in a much better way, which is exactly what, what the Volkswagen did. And uh, yeah, so I don't know what led them to make this, make, make this decision. So could they not fit into the existing frame? There must have been something, but it's clear that um, switching them is a much better solution, both for the space and for the, uh, for the balance of the car overall. Well, um, but I guess uh, 5 Series were never about being completely practical. Uh, other than that, look at it. It's nice and it drives nicely. Still, I don't know uh, how it would handle the sharp turns. Uh, I've never tried that and I'm not planning to. I'm a, 
a normal consumer who will never go drifting or anything. So from that standpoint, we're quite okay, right? Oh yeah, important thing about the comfort, um, when you want uh, the passengers to be comfortable, it's uh, completely shaded. And not just uh, here um, on the sides, but also pretty cool, I think. Now, had this been a normal electric car, imagine how much space would have been there in the front. But we have here um, a pretty big four-cylinder engine, two-liter, despite the name 530E. Uh, and it's um, giving the combined uh, power of 250 uh, horsepower, I think, uh, which is uh, enough to have a pretty brisk acceleration. Um, I don't know where the electric motor is. Uh, it's probably built in into the um, gearbox as well. So all the uh, electricity and everything uh, and all the wiring are nowhere to be seen. Uh, looks pretty neat. And again, by the standard of the uh, uh, 20th century, it's really, really nice. But it's the past. This is, this is dying. Cockpit, beautiful. This display looks on par as uh, the one at Model S, I have to say. Graphics are quite nice and responsive. You have the map, the navigation, you have the speed, the charge modes, um, get the uh, revs, fuel, and even the street name, speed limit, everything nice. And there's one thing that I wish I had on my Tesla, and that's this thing, guys. I drive. Why do I like it so much? I like it because it's so much safer than all these stupid touchscreens. The screen that you have here is not big and not spectacular anymore and everything, but when you're driving and you have to reach out and touch something, it's not as, as safe as, as actually reaching out towards the iDrive and, and doing it without trying to be precise with your finger. It's much safer. All these knobs and dials look very traditional, of course, and people uh, love it or people hate it, uh, having switched to Tesla. I have a bit of a um, changing mood about these things. They are, of course, uh, much more comfortable and easier to use if you get used to them. But there's something about that feel that when you have, it's, it's like, you know, Steve Jobs used to say, when you have this thing, you already shipped it and you, can, you cannot change it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things, they're already shipped. Whereas Tesla, they can change the functionality uh, with the updates. So it makes the perfect sense for the 21st century to have the big screen instead. But what I would do uh, if I had uh, a choice and I would sort of assemble the perfect electric car, it would have a Tesla 3 screen, but it would also have the iDrive. And what else would it have? It would have this. It would have the BMW head-up display. It's so brilliant, so good. They were the first ones to implement it, and they're still industry-leading experts in making it work properly. It's just things floating above the surface, above the bonnet. Uh, you can clearly see them. It's very, very usable. And that's something that Tesla really needs. I don't know why Elon hates the head-up displays. I love them. Another thing that Tesla needs, of course, are the quality seats. Some ventilated seats with those electric lumbar support and the side support and, and all these uh, things about them. They're much more com comfortable than the ones uh, at, at my Tesla. And pretty nice mirrors. Good visibility. No complaints there. So, there we have it. Your typical BMW cockpit from 5 Series with a brilliant head-up display. Oh yeah, forgot to mention about the screen. Uh, yeah, its size is a bit underwhelming, of course, but um, forget about the size. Uh, it's, it, it's located where it should be located. It's very visible. Graphics are very uh, nice. Uh, the resolution is pretty high. And most important thing, you can operate through it without looking uh, at, uh, you know, what, what you do. You're not looking at, at the iDrive. You, you're just doing this and you can intuitively 
go through everything, all the menus, without looking uh, at the iDrive. It's, it's super practical and safe. Nice. Good screen. And yeah, um, what's also good about uh, the current generation is that it has the Android Auto, it has Apple CarPlay, and it has also a working app where you can pre-install your navigation, you can heat your car. Um, I have to say the, uh, the one, uh, the app of, of Volkswagen, there is an app, but it, it's, it's not very good and it's working pretty uh, with a pretty unstable quality. BMW have worked out a better one, but again, like with everything else, nothing even compares to Tesla, which is a totally different level uh, in terms of using your phone uh, seamlessly with your car. This is, uh, this is okay, but not as good as Tesla. Here we are driving the 5 Series, and do I notice much difference with almost anything else? No, I don't. Why? <laughs> Because if you're not breaking the law and obeying all the speed limits and not doing anything crazy, almost all the cars are pretty much the same. That's the sad reality, guys. It doesn't matter. You don't need super fast acceleration. You don't need uh, all this power. Okay, sorry for being so pessimistic, but <laughs> that's a bit of a reality here. Um, yeah, you need to have some certain conditions, some roads, particular circumstances, uh, some mountain roads. There you can have fun. I've spent years uh, at pretty much the same position. Thousands and thousands and tens of and hundreds of thousands of kilometers driven with BMWs. Uh, I think overall about 350,000 with two cars that I had. So it's totally familiar, this badge, that head-up display. Oh, lovely head-up display, love it. Very good resolution, not in my way, uh, gives all the needed information, nice. It's a pretty long car, but um, I feel very comfortable in the city. The turn radius is good. Um, I feel the space on the dimensions quite well, so no complaints there. Let's see if this car can accelerate. Sports mode back to map let's go nice six seconds that's full uh, two seconds faster than my Passat and <laughs> almost full two seconds uh, slower than Tesla but it's very brisk no complaints there I want to select back the comfort mode for example up and then the map quick glance major choices nice it is certainly a different level of uh, soundproofing than almost uh, yeah anything that I've driven before actually much quieter than uh, Tesla 3 much quieter than my Passat maybe it's just a perception I haven't measured it but it does feel extremely comfortable and um, uh, yeah I wish there was a passenger for me to hear the conversation you have to speak up a little bit in Tesla 3 I have to say at the at, at any speed above 100 and here I don't feel that I need to speak up so quite nice let's test the turn at the higher speed no problem at all hey I can still hear the wind though, it's not like it completely disappeared, but it's a bit quieter than in Tesla 3. Yeah, <laughs> I think my personal best is uh, 400 kilometers in two hours, back in 2010. Uh, that was the day of the, uh, of the game uh, when Germany played, uh, I think, Uruguay for the bronze of, of the World Cup. And I was driving in southern Germany and there was nobody, so I was just doing 210, 220. So average, averaging 200 per hour. This is 
designed to gobble up and eat the kilometer after kilometer after kilometer. No problem at all. It's such a familiar feeling of, of sitting here and, and just going the distance. And that's the thing. The brand loyalty that I used to have was coming from the fact that uh, it drives so nicely. Um, it's one of the fastest thing in the world and uh, you feel the good balance and everything. The car lost its appeal, I, I would say. The brand lost its appeal. Anybody can do that these days and Tesla can do it better. Except, of course, for the fact that, uh, yeah, you cannot go thousands and thousands of kilometers. You have to charge. <laughs> you cannot do 400 kilometers in two hours in Tesla. Not a single Tesla would give to you this at the moment. So guys, conclusion, what about this car? Well, I mean, look at it. It's so beautiful. And just uh, with its looks, you can probably forgive almost anything uh, you have at fault. Um, it's not very practical at all. Uh, it's, uh, it's not very uh, uh, fast, as, as fast as a Tesla 3 or something. Uh, but it has lots and lots of uh, own merits. It's very comfortable, it's beautiful, it's nice to drive. Um, it can take you places. Uh, you don't have, have to charge it on the highway. Um, small boot, yes. Um, uh, bad balance, yes. Uh, but um, it's quite, quite pleasant to own it and drive it, I have to say. Would I buy it? Uh, no. So there's a reason why I prefer uh, Passat, because it's a bit more practical and everything that I've listed. But, um, you know, I can fully imagine enjoying this car a lot because that's uh, exactly what I did for many, many years uh, in the in the BMWs. So um, whoever gets it, um, well, have fun and uh, keep it until uh, the next generation of something. Uh, who knows what's coming? Enjoy.